Hi, this is Eric. Scott and I first met our friend Lois when we worked together at VH1, where she had the fun job of picking the music videos. She had gotten her start in radio, working with Howard Stern, which made perfect sense because she's funny, smart, and brash. These days, she's a dynamic artisan who navigates life, one art project after another. My name is Lois Arano, and I'm a potter, and, and I make stuff. Lots of stuff, including messes. I make messes, I make children. So I spin my own yarn. I knit compulsively. So I started taking pictures of what I call shoes on the street. The cranes. The cranes started because I was depressed. So I decided I was going to make a thousand cranes. I like the repetitive work. It's, it's meditative to me. And, you know, meditative equals art. And this is, this is my world. The studio I'm in now, I call the Fortress of Solitude because for the first time I'm working by myself. I've shared studios with, with, with great people who I've learned a lot from, but I've come to discover that I don't necessarily like people and I don't necessarily, aside from you guys now, I don't necessarily like people in my space. One of the best parts for me of doing this work is when I can come in the studio and make some work and open the bag of clay and I smell the clay and I put on, I put on music really loud and just lose track of time and, and make stuff. Literally, clay is dirt. You can dig it up in your backyard and you can make something out of it. There are a lot of things that I love about pottery. I love the way when you're making something on the wheel, it looks like magic. I love that you know what to expect, but there's always a surprise. You put something in the kiln, and sometimes you get a miracle without intending it, and sometimes you get a real disaster without intending it. And I started experimenting with glazes. This is actually what they call a glaze flaw. It's called crawling. But when you do it in excess, it can look really cool. A lot of people tell me it's their favorite mug. Feeling it makes people happy. Everyone tells me they like the belly buttons. When people use my stuff, they just, they just tell me it makes them really, really happy. I think that the work is not finished until somebody uses it. But when people use it, then, then the work is finished and then it has life. So, you want to hear about the running? Yeah. I started running. Why? Because I was fat. <laughs> I started running because I was fat. And I hate the gym and it seemed like something I could do. Eight months after that I ran a half marathon. And then I started running across the Brooklyn Bridge. I would go over the bridge and I would feel so damn lucky to be there because it was so beautiful. I started taking pictures because I would see cool things. From there I started taking all kinds of pictures, not just on the bridge but everywhere. And then I started noticing that people, that there were shoes all over the place. People leave shoes, I don't know how they get there. And the, the shoes tell a story and I wonder how, how they got there and who left them there and, 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 and how did they get home without their shoes? And, and I know this sounds crazy, but it's one of the things that kept me running is I would run to look for these things and it became, you know, and so the running became, you know, good for my body and good for my head, but it also became another art project. Um, I don't know, I don't know that I figured out anything and then on the other hand, I feel like I figured out everything. Along the way, I have met amazing, I have met and kept amazing people in my life and I feel really, really lucky. My friends and the people I know and the people that I'm drawn to are sort of from, you know, as the island of misfit toys. Everybody's a little strange and a little off and we're all seconds. You know what? It's, it's kind of like my work. When I send things to a gallery or a store, they all have to be uniform. But the ones that are, as we call them, seconds, I keep and I sell them at, at Christmas sales or at studio sales and um, those seem to be the ones that people like best and I think I feel that way about the people in my life. The ones who are a little bit wacky or a little bit off or, or think kind of differently. Everybody has something and, and everyone has something interesting. I, I like working alone but I'm fascinated with people. And, uh, 
I don't know, if there's any part of the journey, I think that the people part is the most important part, as long as they keep their distance from me. So.